everyone, it's Julia. This week I worked on another sketch to stitch design. It is this dandelion design. Perhaps a little out of season, but we have snow on the ground here in Minnesota and I'm just not ready. So I took this out again. Plus I've been reading more and more about the wonderful healing properties of dandelions. So I wanted to do a design. It's, it's happy, it's cheerful. It, it says every dream begins with a wish. It also brings me back to my childhood when we used to pluck the dandelions and made a wish and then blew out this fuzzy stuff all over. That's where this is, the inspiration on this is. I wish, I'm going to show you how I made the pillow, um, but there's also, a, I made a, a wonderful wall hanging, made the same way basically as the pillow love making these clips. I've done these a, a few times in different videos. These, I'll link the, the a link down below for these large um, clips. I just use like a chalk paint to paint them and then add a yo-yo. Wonderful little way to hang a, a mini art quilt. Just adds a lot of texture. It just, it's just fun. But so there's that. And then I also, with the same design, made this little eyeglass case. Now, if you're interested in making this same project, I do have a PDF in my Etsy shop, and I'll link that down below for you. It does have basic instructions on the pillow. Also, the design, basic instructions on how I make the, the uh, eyeglass case and also the template for the eyeglass case, and then just some general instructions on how I transfer my designs and re removing this, this, the water-soluble stabilizer and some free motion hints too. So that all is included in the PDF. But today we're gonna work on the pillow, and I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. I have a, my design here. And I've cut my uh, top, and this is just a natural colored muslin, and I've cut it at a 14 by 14 inch. You can cut yours any size you want. It can be smaller, it can be a little bit bigger. You just want your design to fit. I also have a warm and natural muslin, and then I have a backing piece too. This backing piece is cool. It's already quilted. I had picked it up on, at the flea market. It was, like an, it was like a coverlet, but I don't need that right now. So I'm gonna put that aside and start on my background. I am using the sol a, a water soluble stabilizer. The one I brand I'm using is the Solvi by Sulky. And you've seen me do this before if you've watched my videos for a while. I do like using this water soluble stabilizer to transfer my design. So I'm just going to be tracing this. I can see through it very easily. I will link down below for you the products that I'm using, both the Solvi and also this pen that I use. This pen works really well to, to write on, on this Solvi. Once that is completely, my design is completely transferred or, or traced, just gonna place that on the top where I'm gonna want it and put a couple pins. I wanna be able to flip this up and down so I see that I'm laying these background pieces in the right, in the right spot. I have just a variety of scraps that I've, that I've cut out, ironed, and cut into rectangle shapes. About, oh, I would say the narrowest one is an inch and then up to like a three inches or so, just laying these out. Like I said, just flipping this back and forth, trying to decide where I want these background pieces to be. For the bottom part of the pillow, I'm going to add some green. And then I, I have this bluish purplish print. I'm gonna lay each a, a square under each of those dandelion heads. You do want those patches to overlap a little, just probably about a quarter of an inch or so. I 
I'm using white school glue now and I'm just going to put a little dot here and there on the on the um, corners of these patches. You don't want to add too much, um, but if you do get this glue someplace where you don't want it, it, it is completely washable. So it's just a nice glue to, to use for this type of thing. It does not gum up your sewing machine, but you do want to make sure it's dry. And you can also heat set it with your iron to make sure that it is dry. I have my, my layers now I have, and I want to go to, take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this background. I'm going to be using that cream color thread first. It's just an all purpose thread and I'm just going to free motion stitch these patches on. I do have a, a zigzag, so I'm zigzagging right now with free motion. So my feed dogs are dropped. I have my darner foot on, which is a free motion foot. And I'm doing all the movement on this and just doing some little doodling here and there. Once that's complete, I'm changing to my walking foot and my colored thread. I have a green and a, and a tan colored thread I'm using. And I'm doing some, um, so just some of my decorative stitches. I always like to add decorative stitches to the background because I don't use them that much and that, that way I just have a chance to use some of those stitches. And you can see it there, my background is complete. I'm going to add just a little bit of white fabric glue. I'm just stippling it on there with this big brush. I think I like a cotton ball would also work. Just want to get it to look like it's going to be a dandelion. I'm going to wait for that to completely dry before I do any stitching. And it's back to laying this where I want it and then pinning it into place until I get it to my sewing machine. Now again, I have my top layer and then I have that batting underneath. So I'll be going, and then the salvie on top. So I'll be going over, or sewing through all three layers. This design looks complicated, but it really isn't. I do have my free motion foot on again, and I have just a straight, I'm just straight stitching on this, but I'm going out on each one of these little stems, doing that little end on it, and then coming back on the same, or similar same line. I try to stay on the same line. Sometimes I get off, but you just keep going all the way around like this. It doesn't take long at all. And then when those are all finished, I'm going to go back and forth a couple times in this center and then head down the stem. On to my lettering now. Again, just going very, you, know, you want to keep the speed going, not terribly fast, but just nice and even. And once I get to the end of each word, I'm going to head backwards and go over my stitching again. That just gives it a little bit more of a pronounced look. Now this is something that you can also do with um, embroidery stitching if you want to do some hand stitching on that. It's all up to you how you want to add your words. Just doing clipping some of my thread away. I think I forgot to mention though, I just, I use a brown colored all purpose thread for this stitching. And now it's on to removing that that's, um, water soluble stabilizer. I'm just carefully removing the big pieces and it tears very easily. And then it's, on to removing those smaller areas and I'm just spritzing it with water, covering it with a paper towel and then pressing and slowly taking that up and all, the rest of that residue is going to just come out off on the paper towel. You might have to do it a couple times, just repeat the process until it's all gone. And then 
that I noticed that you can't see the, the word, the uh, and so I'm gonna add some slow stitching on this, which I'm really getting into, and I just love adding it to some of my, my designs. Just think it adds a whole nother dimension. And just gonna be sticking a couple pieces of lace on too, and I'm gonna just whip these down by hand. And there it is, you can see I did just stitch that, the, the word ah, uh, a little bit better in a cream colored thread, and then added some detail with slow stitching, and then, then whip stitch down some of that lace. Time to clean up my edges. Just removing any, just squaring up, removing any of that batting that's sticking out. And now turning my, putting my right sides together. So I just laid that, that on top of my backing piece. Notice I cut that backing piece a little bit big, but I'm just gonna leave that until I finish um, sewing. And then I'll trim that down. I usually leave about a six inch opening And here's me marking so I don't forget to leave that six inch opening. And then I'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch this and then do my trimming. I stitch this at about a half an inch seam allowance and I do lower my, my stitch length and I make sure to secure my stitch at that opening. And then when I trim, I don't trim that opening. I leave that the same width, but I do trim my corners and then get in there and turn it so that the right sides are out. And then rolling those seams and pressing those nice. Um, I do close my pillows using my sewing machine, just folding that little end down and I stuff them with a polyester fiber fill. I'm gonna link a video on how I close my, my pillow so you have that reference. And here's some pictures at the end. I hope everybody enjoys this. This is kind of a breath of fresh air. Here's some other detail work. and a little close up of the eyeglass case. And again, the instructions for the eyeglass case and the template are in the packet. And then here's some of the pictures of the wall hanging done very similar to the pillow. I hope you enjoyed this everybody. Have a great week, bye for now.